An important species of pleasure, and thus an important source of custom, originates in habit. One does what is habitual better and more easily, and thus prefers to do it. One derives a sense of pleasure from it, and knows from experience that the habitual has proved itself, and is thus useful. A custom one can live with is demonstrated as salutary, beneficial, in contrast to all novel experimentations that have not yet proved themselves. Custom is consequently the union of the pleasant and the useful, and in addition it demands no cogitation. As soon as man is in a position to exercise compulsion, he exercises it to introduce and impose his customs, for to him they are demonstrated practical wisdom. A community of individuals likewise compels each separate individual to observe the same custom. Here there is the false conclusion. Because one feels happy with a custom, or at least can preserve one's existence by means of it, this custom is necessary, for it counts as the sole condition under which one can feel happy. A happy life seems to derive from this custom alone. This conception of the customary as a condition of existence is conveyed into the minutest particulars of custom. Since insight into actual causality is very slight among the lower peoples and cultures, one sees to it with superstitious fear that everything continues on in the way it has always gone. Even when custom is hard, rigorous, burdensome, it is preserved on account of its apparent supreme utility. One does not know that the same degree of well-being can also exist under different customs, or that even higher degrees are attainable. But one does perceive that all customs, even the harshest, grow milder and more pleasant in the course of time, and that even the strictest mode of life can become habitual, and thus a source of pleasure.